Welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. A 26-year-old female came to the ER with alleged history of ingestion of 60 tablets of paracetamol. Okay. On initial 26-year-old female. 26-year-old female. So how much uh, mg total? Um, 60. Uh, 60 tablets, 500 mg. Uh. So around 30 grams. 30 grams. Okay. okay. Uh, on initial 10-second assessment, uh, airway patent, uh, no drooling of secretion, breathing, respiratory rate of 24 per minute with saturation of 98% room air. Circulation BP of 110 uh, bar 70 with heart rate of 60 per minute and uh, capillary refill time less than 2 seconds. Uh, disability wise GCS was E4, V5, M6, bilateral pupil equally reactive. Exposure wise temperature A febrile with a GRBS of 360 milligram per deciliter. Then uh, adjunct to primary survey, uh, we had taken a VBG point of care. Uh, it showed a pH of 7.312 with PCO2 of 34.8, PO2 of 47.7, bicarb of 17.1. A lactate of 3.9, uh, GRBS of 363, uh, sodium potassium was uh, normal. Okay, so um, in a patient with a uh, paracetamol overdose, so this patient uh, took 30 grams 30. of paracetamol. Was it a single ingestion? Yes, single ingestion, over 20 minutes. Sure. Over 20 minutes. And when did the patient present it to the ER? After around 8 hours. 8 hours, mm -hmm. okay. So in a case of paracetamol overdose, uh, what all things we will be looking in the primary survey? Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, 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 one, uh, patient usually will present with multiple episodes of vomiting, pain, mm. abdomen. Mm. So, uh, patient might have good aspirin. So, uh, aspirate, okay. We, could have, we might have to look for that. So, in the uh, uh, since the patient presented in the first day itself, mm. uh, vomiting is the most common mm -hmm. symptom which is anticipated. So, mm. airway, uh, an issue can come in the airway only uh, with, with yeah. because of that. Otherwise, if the patient is conscious oriented, mm -hmm. it will not be a problem. Mm -hmm. And towards the third day and all, mm -hmm. what will hinder the, the airway? Patient will go into NCF, one of the uh, patient might go into NCF, might mm -hmm. have other organ uh, dysfunction, have anuria, hypoglycemia, mm -hmm. patient can have uh, uh, right uh, abdominal, right sided abdominal pain. Okay, so in that case, uh, if the patient's sensorium mm -hmm. is getting lost, then a, a patient is having a severe acidosis and all, mm -hmm. that can affect the airway and the mm -hmm. breathing pattern mm -hmm. also. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then disability? Uh, disability wise, when uh, GCS uh, patient had no, GCS drops drop will altered. happen in, in uh, third, third, third stage. Third okay. Yes, then hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia also can be there. Lactic acidosis will be there. Okay, okay. Uh, so, so this was the first, first ABG. Uh, first ABG uh, okay. Yeah, we took. Uh, so, uh, ma'am, uh, also. Uh, what was the ABG uh, findings? Ma'am, it was showing lactic acidosis. No, in, lactate of 3.9 with uh, anion gap, uh, sorry, uh, bicarb of 17.1 mm. uh, and normal anion gap. Mm. Uh, so, uh, ma'am, uh, it, it was showing lactic acidosis basically. Mm. Uh, also, ma'am. Uh, Why lactic acidosis for this patient now? Uh, ma'am, actually, uh, patient had multiple episodes of vomiting from outside already. Mm. And also, patient is a known case of type 1 diabetes mm. uh, who had skipped her medication since last one week. Mm. So, uh, uh, ma'am, it could be due to dehydration uh, because of which uh, lactic acidosis could be there. Mm. And also, uh, since bicarb was uh, around in the uh, in the acidotic range, 17.9, we also have to suspect if uh, it, would keep, it could be due to decay since mm. patient had missed her medication since one week. Sugars were 360. 360. Uh, usually, dehydration doesn't cause lactic acidosis, uh, only hypoperfusion will cause, maybe because of the retching, vomiting, mm. and all. Uh, is the patient on metformin or any other? No, she is on uh, insulin, uh, biphasic insulin as part. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, what yeah. what is the ABG which is expected in the first stage, I mean like at the first day of presentation? No, it will be normal only for the acidosis only, with, uh, metabolic acidosis could be there. Metabolic acidosis in this third stage, mm -hmm. when the, uh, after two or three days. Mm -hmm. First stage, we, uh, mostly the patient will be having vomiting. vomiting. Then what will be the finding in vomiting? Uh, uh, metabolic alkalosis, metabolic alkalosis mm -hmm. and hypokalemia. That mm -hmm. is the expected mm -hmm. ABG finding. Since this patient had some diabetic related mm -hmm. issues and all, it can be uh, because of that also. Okay. Then what other investigation will have to send in the primary survey? We'll send for uh, serum, uh, sorry, paracetamol levels for this patient. Um, that's okay. Uh, this patient came within 20 minutes. So. 20. Eight hours. Eight hours. Eight hours. Within eight hours. Okay. So uh, you have taken an ABG. Mm -hmm. What else? 
Ma'am, uh, we have taken a ECG. Mm. Uh, For if, what? Uh, if any co-ingestion would be there, uh, mm. then we can suspect like if any TCA poisoning or uh, other than QTC prolongation could be seen in ECG. But paracetamol wise, ECG would not show any changes. Changes, okay. Mm. Then what else this patient will take? Uh, Investigations. Mm. Paracetamol. Ah. Okay, uh, see, uh, <coughs> normal routine labs and uh, serum ketones and uh, mm. this pa serum paracetamol levels were sent for this paracetamol. patient. Paracetamol. What all labs will you send? Ma'am, uh, we mainly will look for LFT, uh, mm. PTINR, uh, or any uh, alanine aspartate uh, transamine is, uh, mm. changes and also for RFT. So the first day we are not expecting any changes, uh, but uh, still we need to get the baseline. So we will have to send for a PTINR, LFT, then a renal function test because uh, as the patient progress to the other stages, there can be renal failure and electrolytes because patient was vomiting. So electrolytes should be sent and since patient is in acidosis, we will have to send for the ketones also. What if the patient came in the first one hour? And then uh, we would have to go for initial uh, gastric lavage. No, will you send paracetamol level? Ma'am, after 4 hours. Only. After 4 hours, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. First hour? Yeah, first hour, ma'am, we will go for gastric lavage and then mm -hmm. we will also give activated charcoal so it will reduce the absorption of the uh, paracetamol. Mm -hmm. How much activated charcoal will you give? 1 gram per kg, but maximum up to 50, k uh, 50 grams only can be given. Okay. When all can you give paracetamol, um, uh, gastric lavage, other than if the patient presents more than 1 hour? And if it is uh, uh, extended, if a patient has consumed a very large amount of drug, mm. or patient has consumed extended release tablets, mm. then we can give even after one hour. Mm. Or like if taken along with uh, any anticholinergics or any opioids, then there will be delayed uh, absorption. Then also mm. we can give. And if uh, for sampling also we can do. Okay. Mm. So this patient, since the patient came after 8 hours, we didn't do the gastric lavage. Okay. And uh, in the first hour, if the patient is coming in the initial 4 hours, we won't be taking a toxicology sample. But this patient came after 8 hours, that's why a toxicology sample was taken. Okay. So coming to sample history, I'm a 26 year old female, known case of type 1 diabetes, came to the ER with complaints of ingestion of 60 tablets of Panadol Extra, which contains uh, 50, uh, 500 milligram of paracetamol with caffeine of 65 uh, milligram at around 10 a.m. of the same day, uh, amounting to around 30 grams of paracetamol with 3.9 grams of caffeine. Uh, she was taken to outside hospital within 1.5 hours of ingestion. Uh, at that time, her complaints were abdominal pain with multiple episodes of vomiting. Uh, gastric lavage was done from there and then she was started on an acetylcysteine infusion. Uh, outside BBG was also showing metabolic acidosis uh, with a bicarb of uh, seven, uh, 90 and then uh, they referred here for further uh, management. So 30 gram, how much is uh, how much is a expected a toxic dose? To toxic dose is usually four gram, uh, more than 4 grams in a day mm. or it is uh, 200. Maximum ma daily dose is 4, 4 gram. gram in a day. Mm. Toxic dose will be ma'am. Uh, one more than 10 grams a day mm. or it can be 200 milligram per kg in mm. 24 hours mm. or more than 6 grams and 200 uh, 150 milligram per kg in a, in 24 hours for two days for two consecutive, two consecutive days. days okay so this patient took anyway 30, 30 grams so it is anyway toxic dose okay uh, then on uh, arrival to the ER, it was almost past 8 hours. So, uh, 200 mg per kg is the dose for uh, for normal individuals, whereas in other individuals, in, uh, when uh, uh, which all individuals are having a more tendency for paracetamol toxicity? Uh, patients whose uh, glutathione reser reserves are uh, less, less. Like chronic uh, alcohol consumption, mm. patients who are uh, taking ATTs on antiretroviral drugs, mm. and then patients uh, with Gilbert syndrome, mm. and then uh, um, malnourished, malnourished individuals and all. Individuals. Okay, and patients who are taking cytochrome uh, mm. 450 uh, enzymes yes. en enhances. Uh, Ma'am, at the time of presentation to the ER, she had no complaints of any pain, abdomen, vomiting or diaphoresis. Only mm. at that time she had nausea. Okay, so uh, what are the stages of paracetamol poisoning? Um, there are four stages. Uh, stage 1 is the first day mm. within 24 hours. At that time patient would usually have only uh, vomiting, no, uh, anorexia, uh, pain, uh, no, uh, vomiting, anorexia and uh, pain, abdomen could be there. But LFTs will be normal in the first day. So mm. the second stage only is... Only change which you can see is metabolic alkalosis and hypokalemia. Mm. And then second day it will be uh, two, two, three. Days. Second stages for two, second and third day. Mm. That time patients uh, 
patient will start developing right upper quadrant pain and there will be tenderness uh, uh, tenderness over the right upper quadrant and uh, LFT mm -hmm. derangement will start. Mm -hmm. Then on the third stage, uh, which is around the fourth day, patient will start developing encephalopathy, uh, hypoglycemia. So LFT derangement, which, L, which are OTPT, LFT? OTPTs mm -hmm. will start and INR will uh, start deranging. Mm -hmm. Then on the th uh, third stage, patient will uh, start developing encephalopathy. Patient might develop uh, renal failure, uh, mm. pancreatitis, hypoglycemia, lactic acidosis. Patient mm. might, uh, f altered phosphate levels can start developing, mm. decrease urine output. Hypokalemia. Hypokalemia. Why mm. alteration in phosphorus level will happen? Either patient can have hypophosphatemia or hyperphosphatemia. When will patient will uh, when all will you see hyperphosphatemia? If Creatinine is If there is associated with renal failure, when will you see hypophosphatemia? Phosphorus is actually a um, agent which will actually repair the liver. So, patient, if the simultaneously along with the hepatic damage, if the repair is happening, then you will be seeing hypophosphatemia. So, we will have to supplement phosphorus because phosphorus helps in regeneration of the liver. Okay. And stage 4? Stage 4, ma'am. If the patient survives the stage 3, then patient will go into recovery. Mm. That is the st uh, stage 4. Uh, otherwise, it may lead to uh, de death. Uh, so, uh, this patient came in stage 1. Mm. Right. Okay. So, uh, what do you think? Uh, the, how is, uh, what is the mechanism of action of paracetamol? Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, paracetamol uh, is uh, 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 metabolized by uh, sulfonide and glucuronyl uh, uh, glucuron, uh, conjugation. Mm. So, after that, uh, only a small part of it uh, is uh, getting um, transferred into uh, an acetyl parabenzoquinone imine, mm. which is the toxic metabolite. But mm. usual doses, little bit only. Through what metabolism? Uh, through uh, through mm. glucuronide and sulfonide conjugation. Conjuna conjugation happens, mm. and if that is not happening, mm. then cytochrome P450 will do. make it into uh, an NEPQ, uh, 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 that is mm. an acetyl. Oh. So that, that that is why we are telling that patients who are uh, having enhancing action of cytochrome 450 will be having higher density for uh, toxicity. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, ma'am, when uh, we are ingesting a toxic dose, then ma'am, uh, maximum of the uh, uh, metabolite will be transferred into NAPQI. That is to be uh, degraded by glutathione to make into a non-toxic metabolite. But since uh, after the glutathione reserves are depleted by more than two third, uh, that uh, the uh, N acetyl parabenzoquinone amine will go and bind with uh, cellular proteins and then cause a centrilobular uh, necrosis. hepatic necrosis and then it will cause liver damage. Okay. Then what happened to this patient? Uh, Examine. Uh, on, uh, then on general examination, a uh, patient who had no palaricterous clubbing, sinosis or any lymphadenopathy, uh, abdominal examination was soft, non-tender and, uh, and bowel sounds were present. Respiratory system wise, bilateral air entry was there and no, there was no any uh, added sounds. Uh, cardiovascular and central nervous system examination were in the, within normal levels. Uh, then we sent her routine uh, labs along with serum paracetamol and serum ketone levels. Uh, we uh, started her on and acetyl cysteine because it, she had taken on 30 grams of paracetamol uh, already from outside she was already started so we uh, continued with uh, what else was given outside outside they had given them the uh, first hour uh, this mm. thing uh, 150 milligram per kg mm. body weight uh, in 200 ml d5 water they had started mm. and the uh, second uh, was started and sent mm. uh, like uh, 50 milligram per kg body weight over 4 hours mm. D5, uh, in uh, 500 ml D5 water that was calculated and started and she was sent. So was there any paracetamol level sent from the from outside? That, uh, hospital was not sent. They in. haven't sent they any haven't paracetamol sent. level but yeah. considering that it was a toxic uh, dose uh, yeah. because yeah. it is more than 200 mg per mm. kg mm. they have started. Mm. Okay. Uh, so ma'am, uh, we started her on uh, maintenance dose first uh, 50 milligram per kg uh, in 500 ml. Okay, so when all will you start uh, um, NAC correction? Uh, usually uh, once if the patient comes to us directly and uh, we will send the serum paracetamol level after 4 hours mm. and if that paracetamol No, level, if the patient comes uh, to you directly after uh, after 4 hours okay. you will send the sample. We'll send, okay. uh, send the sample and uh, after getting the report, if uh, we'll plot it in the Rumac Matthew uh, normogram, and if it comes uh, above the uh, treatment line, then mm. we will start on NSATL. So, if it is, if the patient is coming in the fourth, uh, if you are sending at the fourth hour, above what level will you treat? One uh, for, for one fifty um, microgram per mm -hmm. liter. 
above what level of paracetamol level will you start 150 150 more than 200 150 to 200 microgram per ml or okay at that time we will start then and then uh, if ma'am it is an unknown uh, injection still we will send for the levels but uh, if the levels take more than 8 hours to come uh, like the report takes more than it then we will already start the patient and if the levels come and normal then we can stop later. stop if the uh, if the levels are below the treatment line we will stop okay then uh, then if uh, ma'am uh, if a patient has any th- symptoms uh, like uh, labs showing the patient is going into failure mm-hmm. then we will also uh, continue, continue. Mm. the infusion when can we chart a rumac matthew normogram within 4 to 24 hours ah, that's a uh, 4 to 24, 24 hours, hours only and when when can what is the only indication in which we can chart rumac matthew normogram if it is a single, single injection. injection if it is a multiple injection we won't be so if it is a multiple injection case what will you do we won't be able to chart we will start uh, symptomatically uh, if Uh, we we will start in we will start initially and we will send for the labs and if the value is more than 10 10 yeah. microgram per ml we will continue till the level is falling below 10 so at uh, so how, what dose will you continue so this patient was getting 10 mg per kg in 500 right 150 150 patient then received 50 mg mm. was continuing uh, we continued till 4 hours and after that we started on 100 mg per kg mm. in 1 liter of d5 water for over 16 hours okay okay and uh, after that uh, mm. so that dose that dose mm. you know 100 mg per kg mm. in uh, d5 water for 16 hours mm. that should be continued Good. till till uh, uh, the, the level is falling less than uh, 10 microgram per ml Uh, then ma'am uh, we started her on hydration as well as uh, anesthetyl cysteine in the meantime ma'am her serum ketones had also come positive mm. so we also uh, and her sugars were also high like uh, around 300 to 400 range on uh, reg- uh, on hourly monitoring mm. so we started her on insulin infusion also mm. uh, potassium at the time of starting was more than 4.5 so after that uh, we were trying to maintain the grbs uh, around below 200 Mm. So you will have to hydrate the hydrate patient, patient give an acetyl cysteine also yeah. insulin okay insulin. and then uh, in between potassium uh, correction was also given to the patient mm. uh, she did not develop any lab abnormalities uh, OT, uh, SGOT and STPTs were always around at, uh, 17 18 in that range only INR was initially 1.3 it came down to 1.1 mm. and then patient symptomatically improved ma'am. okay so what mm. was the paracetamol level for her in this uh, 5.9 lab Five. lab Uh, only 5.9 was 9 was there so mm-hmm. now i think we uh, by the time we got the result we could have stopped stopped the infusion but if the patient has taken an extended release tablet we will have to repeat the level again mm-hmm. after 4 hours and we will have to see if the uh, level mm-hmm. is rising again so if it is still rising we will have to consider continue, continue the, infusion. the infusion okay okay so uh, when will you consider liver transplant to a patient with paracetamol orders which is very unlikely because mm-hmm. usually by uh, if you are giving an acetyl cysteine patient mm-hmm. will improve mm-hmm. early an acetyl cysteine will improve the patient mm-hmm. but when all will you consider um, uh, will consider when there is a criteria when king's college criteria for uh, liver uh, transplantation which is uh, divided into acetaminophen induced or all, all other factors mm-hmm. so uh, in the acetaminophen acetaminophen induced uh, criteria uh, the first criteria is if the patient is having ph uh, arterial ph of less than 7.3 then or uh, other three criteria all three have to be fulfilled whether uh, uh, prothrombin time is more than 100 seconds mm. creatinine more than 3.4 and um, lactic uh, lactic acid hepatic encephalopathy hepatic encephalopathy more no. than grade 3 or grade 4 okay so in that case we will have to involve the ga yes, surgery yes. team also mm-hmm. so uh, till that time if the patient's inr is altering we are not supposed to correct that mm-hmm. inr mm-hmm. till the patient meets we can give whatever other remedy mm-hmm. i n uh, we will not be giving the ffps or vitamin k we will be monitoring mm-hmm. whatever the reversible agents like n still cysteine and supportive management for hypoglycemia can be done mm-hmm. okay so this patient mm-hmm. didn't have any mm-hmm. lft alteration mm-hmm. along with that patient had dehydration and mm-hmm. maybe ketones might be positive because of dehydration or um, decay um, and that was also treated okay and what happened to the patient mm-hmm. then uh, eventually she uh, 
all labs became normal she also in symptomatically improved then we could discharge the patient okay okay